at September 22nd at about one minute after seven. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> fire evacuation announcement. In case there's a fire, there's two ways out of the, uh, the, the room here. One is right straight behind you. The other one is out through these doors, down the stairs, out through the back doors. And please, if there is an emergency, please walk away as far away as you can uh, from the building. Thank you. Will the secretary call the roll, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Louis Fiore. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella is here. Francis Alimo, absent. Kiran Rajmudar. Here. Kenneth Helensky. Here. Vinny Garillo. Absent. Christian D'Antonio. Here. Uh, Nicholas Lefakis is absent. Thank you. In the absence of uh, regular member Alimo, uh, it's, it's Mr. D'Antonio's turn in September, so he will be sitting in tonight in all the cases as a uh, active full-time member. Approval of minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. Motion made by Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to accept the minutes. Discussion. Um, I, I requested change, but. Yeah, I would recommend actually that we table these. Oh, okay. um, I think some of the members didn't quite get, I know an email was sent out, but some of them didn't see that. I didn't get the it. The original, because um, we did have a little problem with the minutes, so we're missing the even pages. Okay. Um, in addition to that, I would like to make a, a notation that that we also, um, some changes need to be made. On page two, the vote for the bond release, where it says six nothing, it really was seven nothing. On page three, where we um, motion to table SPR 1901, the vote was seven nothing, not six nothing. And on page four, um, Motion to close a public hearing for XXP 3405 was also to vote was seven to nothing, not six to nothing. That's that's my debts. Um. Yeah. That's that's my changes. Any, anyone else have? Uh, my, yes. My, yes. My apologies. Yeah. Um, do, do you? So so Rebecca is informing me that she sent two sets of of. Minutes and apparently you won't. You got the earlier set. Okay. Right. So um, uh, maybe these will be corrected by then. Okay. Okay. And then there was another one on page. Hold on. I'm 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 kind of like cheating off of. Yeah, we're right here. Page, page five. On page five, one, two, three, fourth paragraph down. It says once fully occupied, 146 sisters would be living in one unit and 24 in another, 146 sisters are not going to be living <laughs> there. There's only gonna be 24 sisters living. So that's, it. and then there was a uh, misspelling that we'll go over later. I have, I have one as well. Yep. Commissioner Holinsky. On uh, page 10, second paragraph where it says, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five dollars. Says Commissioner Holinsky. Uh, there's an S on the end of Commissioner. It should be Commissioner. Commissioner Holinsky does not see add C where it is specifically prohibited. Right. Looks like the word C is missing. Yeah. Any other notations? Seeing that the staff and and our stenographer are all squared away, and we'll, we'll, you know, we're just going to table these for the next. We're not going to accept them as is. We'll just I'll entertain a motion to table the minutes of September 8th, please. So we'll moved. Move. Motion made by Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Commissioner Holinsky to table the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The record shows unanimous to table the minutes. No new town attorney report, so we still have the one from, uh, I think, August 23rd. This is our latest one. Now we'll move on to public participation at this point in the meeting. The Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions related to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda. 
any matter that is part of an open public hearing of the commission, or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending, which also includes anything that's in pending legal status. So is there anyone who would like to come in front of the commission tonight? Is there anyone who would like to come in front of the commission tonight? For the final time, is there anyone who would like to come in front of the commission tonight? Seeing none, public participation is closed. There's no uh, bond releases tonight. And there's no new public hearings tonight. <clears throat> now we get down to PH 3040MA, uh, 1297 Enfield Street. Um, as chairman, I'm mentioning that we need to leave this on the table tonight and not bring this up based on the fact that we have been advised that there's still, um, our legal staff is still researching the petition that um, some things were brought in front of us two weeks ago that still have not been rectified. So this basically needs to be left on the table tonight. So seeing that, we're gonna be leaving that item on the table tonight. There'll be no action or no discussion. Moving on to new business. SPR 1901. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'm just going to give the audience a chance to leave. Yeah. Site Plan Review 1901, 160 Spring Street. Do you care to read it, Mr. Secretary? You want me to read it? It's up to you. <clears throat> sure. Uh, okay. Um, SPR number 1901, 160 Spring Street, application for the demolition of two small warehouses <clears throat> and the construction of a new building. Andrew Crane, applicant, Kelly Fredette Lumber, owner, map 21, lot 2, I1 zone. And we need to do one... Um, Administrative thing, I need a motion to take this off the table because we did physically place this on the table at last meeting. Is there a motion made by Vice Chairman DeGray to take this off the table? Is there a second? Seconded by Commissioner D'Antonio. All those in favor of taking this off the table, please signify by saying aye. 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 Let the record show that it was unanimous to uh, take this item off the table. Thank you. So please identify yourself for the record, please. My name is Dan Sullivan. I work for Kelly Fredette Lumber. I'm the vice president of the company. And we have an application in to construct a new storage building on 160 Spring Street. And we had hired a general contractor, A. Crane Construction. Um, he was going to take care of the permitting for us. But apparently, the last meeting, there were some questions. Uh, he is out of the country right now. So I contacted our um, engineer. And he made some adjustments to the site plan, which you should have copies of. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I should be able to answer most questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight, too. Thank you. Thank you for working with staff at this. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Just give us one second because we no problem. got this information. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at it? Mr. Chairman? Yes. If, if it makes it more efficient for you while you're kind of yep. perusing Thank the you. plans, I'll just give you kind of the brief update. Um, at the last meeting, remember, there were, I think, four issues. One had to do with the monitoring well. One had to do with the sewer hookup and related information. One had to do with uh, the lights and more detail on the lighting. And then the last was kind of a courtesy request for some additional, some plantings up along the frontage um, on the street. So. Over the last two weeks, I guess it's been uh, staff's work with the applicant and, and others to um, get those resolved, I believe. Uh, we did provide you, I think, with an email that contains some information about the monitoring well. Uh, North Central Health District reviewed that email, that information. Uh, they're satisfied and, and don't have any additional questions about the closure of uh, that monitoring well. It was actually quite some time ago. Um, and had to do with the tank removal and some soil contamination. Uh, but that, that monitoring well hasn't been active for at least, I think it's close to 20 years, if not, if not more. So that should be resolved. Um, uh, as to the sewer, um, interestingly enough, the bathroom in the existing building to the north 
is actually in the front of that building, and the, the individual hookup runs out to the line in the street. So anything to the rear is uh, inactive and uh, has been inactive for, for many, many years. So there are some annotations and notes on the plan to that effect. There's some additional information. Uh, the sewer easement in the back has been shown. And so I met with John Cabibbo earlier today, and John is satisfied in that regard. Um, and he doesn't feel that there's any more need for additional information in terms of the sewer. Um, John did have some additional comments relative to some of the frontage work, and those were included as conditions of approval, uh, specifically the removal of the concrete sidewalk in the driveway apron, um, and then a certification by the PE on the plan as opposed to the DLS. So those were included as conditions. Uh, for, for the lights, we did get a plan, I think it was on the 14th, so you have the photometrics, you have a little bit better detail on the wall packs themselves, and I think that information shows that there won't be any uh, trespass, light trespass um, from those wall packs, and um, so I think that information was helpful, and I thank the Commission for, for asking for that. And then lastly on the plantings, you'll see on this revised plan that there are three what are labeled as trees there's no indication as to what actually those are my suggestion and i wrote this into the conditions would be that the final plan would be revised to substitute out something that's a little bit more appropriate as far as the scale in the in the front of the building i mean there's only about 10 or 11 feet and in a tree you know i think we'd all agree is going to be a little too big for that space so maybe some more um you know vertical Right. Arborvitaes or, or something like that. So that's basically the gist of it. And if you have any questions, by all means, you know, let okay. us know. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Any, any questions at this point? John? Everything? I, I, I have no questions. I, I, I want to thank the applicant for, uh, you know, taking our recommendations and suggestions, especially, uh, you know, as it pertains to uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, considering some some sort of landscaping and, and so forth. And, and I see that you acknowledge the uh, um, the conditions that the engineer has put out, the two conditions as well, that they'll be in a condition, conditions for approval, but uh, thank you. You're welcome. So I take it, this is 26 conditions, pretty much covers it all from your perspective. As far as we're concerned, yeah. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Anything else, you're all set, staff? Anything you want like to add? No, I just appreciate you taking the time to consider this again for us. Yeah, no, thank you again. I, you know, thank you for working with yep. us the last two weeks. Um, thank you very much. Is there a motion? Since the discussion is done, is there a motion to approve? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, SPR number 1901 in accordance uh, uh, with the uh, uh, staff prepared um, Motion dated 9-22-22 with the 26 conditions listed. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Motion made by Secretary Petronella. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary, for roll call. Yeah. Uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Uh, Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Kiran Majwadar. Four. Uh, Ken Holinsky. Four. Uh, Christian D'Antonio. Four. And John Petronella is four. Thank you. The record shows unanimous. Seven nothing for, for this application. Thank you. All right. We're all set. We're all set. Thank all right, you. Thank you very thank you much. Again. I appreciate your help. Thank yep. You. Look forward to working with you. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to move on to XZA. 3048 application of to the town of Anfield to modify section 820 of the marijuana regulation for separating distances within the BR zone and eliminate, eliminate variances. And maybe staff can just kind of just high level this for us. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, we had um, discussed this at the last meeting, and you asked that it be put into proper format for a zoning regulation, which Matt has successfully done. Um, in short, the purpose of this is to uh, prohibit the Enfield ZBA from allowing any variances from separating distances. 
and then also to allow the PZC to modify separating distances only within the business regional zone from an actual cannabis use of any kind to any use that might have separating distance provided they are both in the business regional. Thank you. So, any, any discussion? Are you looking now for, a vote, for us to vote on this or just to uh, give you the approval to go ahead with the public hearing and send yeah. it off to Krog? Just yeah, send just, to Krog. just yeah. look for a consensus to yeah. just accept the application and then we'll get the all the process started. Okay. I, looking here, I yeah. Just one question for more clarity that a proposed use, cannabis use, is within certain distance of whatever our limitations call for, only this commission can make the change from what's required to what's being proposed. Is that about right? Yep. Correct. So the Correct. ZBA doesn't have the right to alter it, vary it, rather. That's, that's, that's the main thrust of it. Uh, just a clarification. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think there is, cons I'm looking here, I think there is consensus to move ahead to schedule yep. a public hearing. Will that be the next meeting? Or do we have to wait uh, for Prague for 35 days. So, so it'll be the take end time. of October then. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. You have our consensus to go forward with that. So Moving on now, SPR 1907 Hazard Avenue. As far as I know, it still remains to be on the table. Um, I think you guys kind of saw the note possibly in the, uh, so we're just going to wait to see what yes. happens here. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that um, this application actually will need to be withdrawn because it does require a special use permit for a drive up ATM. Okay. So um, we're going back and forth with the applicant. Oh, yeah. So okay. We'll just they're, wait. They're busy. <laughs> wait and see with some direction on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to SPR uh, 1904, 35 Anfield Street, administration approval. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is just an administrative approval for um, a retail shop to be located in a, in a structure that has been retail and restaurant before. I guess there used to be an ice cream shop there. And, it, you know, pretty much it's the standard non-conforming site, but it's similar use to similar use. So, and this is at um, 35 Enfield Street. Everybody kind, of, everybody kind of know where that is? Yeah, it's yeah. the little, yeah. So there's like a little two family on it, and then there's like this, what yeah. used to be, I guess there used to be a dress shop there yeah. too. A, dress a lot shop of different and, things. Pizza and, shop. Yeah, Pizza so. shop. I think yeah. twice ice cream parlors, I think twice. Yeah. yeah. Two ice cream places. It was an. It was originally an ice cream place. Yeah. Then it went to a pizza shop, and then it went yeah. back to ice cream. We we just really felt that yeah. as far as parking, it's really a wash. So, and there's gonna be a vape shop, vape and smoke smoke shop across the street from them. Ironically, there's two. They'll be like so. right in a row. Three in a row. She likes ice cream. No, no. Smoke shops. There's oh, smoke the vape shop. shops. There's three in a row. Yeah. 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 I so, choose that something you could always consider putting separating distances on when we do the regulations. Okay. On vape shops? On, on anything, if you don't think that there should be more than one more uses. so, so much right. distance of another. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'll be pondering that tonight. Mm. <laughs> All right. Move. While you eat, while you drink your blizzard? Yes. Yeah, well, I have my blizzard after the meeting, yes. <laughs> Moving on to other business, uh, discussion concerning public art and and or murals. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, we do have it. And everybody should have had something yeah. there in front of us, so I'm going to kind of let staff uh, lead the direction on this. So um, there's been some inquiry. Actually, thank you. There's been some inquiry actually over the few, last few years of pro allowing for murals in town. And most recently, um, Ronnie Salas, who's um, updating the, the uh, retail church shops on Main Street and then 92 Main Street. Um, I've got that up. So he would like to put a mural on, his, on the back retaining wall. And that is something that has come up. And so I've sp been speaking with uh, Ellen Sasu, our town manager, and she said, you know, to look into what regulations we have, we would need to have. So, um, in speaking with Matt, we both agreed that it's kind of a freedom of speech issue. 
um, you know, art, art is art. It's kind of in the eye of the beholder. And if, as long as it's not has does not have any commercial content, then it's not a sign. But a lot of towns have exempted murals and public art just to make sure that it's clear that it's not a zoning issue. So all I've done literally is taken the existing zoning regulations and added under general requirements, adding a G saying the following are exempt from the sign regulations, public art on, in, on private and public properties that contain no commercial message. And then at the very bottom, I provided a definition of public art, any visual work of art accessible to public view on public or private property. The art may include but not be limited to sculptures, murals, monuments, frescoes, fountains, paintings, stained glass or ceramics. Said art may not include any commercial message. So I took that from one of the planning dictionaries and kind of just pared it down because there, theirs was a bit more specific to location. So um, you don't have to take any action on this tonight if you don't want to. Um, but if you if you're okay with this, then you know we could send this to Krog as well, uh, because it'll pretty much be exactly as it's stated yep. right here. Unless you have questions or comments or modifications. You go ahead. I, yeah. I have some questions. Um, well, first of all, art murals to me is very subjective. To one person, it's art. To another person, it's graffiti. To another person, it's blight. Um, and, and if you allow that in a public place, you're forcing it upon uh, upon the public. Uh, I don't necessarily agree agree with this. Um, I think um, th there, there's no size regulations with this. It could be the whole side of a building. If mm -hmm. they want to put a mural on a building, is that the way I understand this? So, yes. so, yeah. so it doesn't have to conform to any size regulations like our signs. Um, so I, I got some issues with that. Um, also, um, the uh, um, it, it, it does not allow for, as, as you got it written here, uh, it may not include any commercial message. Um, what about political messaging? That's a big problem, yeah. with, with me at least. Uh, and, and that just gets into a much bigger issue that uh, I, I'm not really a fan of promoting that because it, it can create yep. mm -hmm. it can create graffiti uh, more graffiti on top of it or it can create something worse um, but anyway I, again I just got some issues and some concerns with this um, I know Thompsonville based upon what I'm hearing from all, all the commission is, is an area of special concern that we all want to try to help and, and revitalize, if you will. And I think everybody here agrees with that. I'm just not sure what this can do to an area. Does it does it take it a step backwards? I don't know. I don't have that answer, but I, I get concerned about that because I, I also grew up in this in this neighborhood too, and I would like to see it come back. It's it's a tough it's a tough call, but uh, um, I'm, I'm not sure. If, if this would help it or hurt it. I, I, I just don't know. I think that there's a lot to discuss on, on something like this. Mr. Chair, could I respond yeah. at, at this point? I, well, I want to add one thing to the okay. case. One thing we didn't cover is that, um, just to let you know, we're not, we're not being asked, we're not being asked to police this in our regulations. Apparently, there is another series of talks going on uh, about the town manager and or the council trying to find another body that would uh, be right. responsible for this. The Culture and Arts right, Commission. Right, right. This is more like us not being responsible for it, I guess, so that we don't become responsible for it. That's why we want to add these to the regulations. I just wanted to throw it out on the yeah. table. But I do kind of agree with, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. That's okay. I do kind of agree with Commissioner, sorry about that, no, too. No. Uh, Commissioner Petronella about, I, I thought the same thing, I read this, I also would like to see that may not include any commercial and or political message. Well, we actually do regulate political message, but that's yeah. actually, actually, with the sign waivers. Or, Go ahead. You, yeah. you wanted to respond to something else, yeah. and I interrupted you before. Go ahead. No, actually, I just wanted to say that um, the, the idea is that this will be overseen by the Cultural and Arts Commission. So, therefore, it wouldn't just be rampant. They'd still have to get some sort of permission. 
and propose what their art is and where it's going to be with that commission. So that's probably going to be an ordinance or something along those lines. I think I think oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Ron. Yeah, I think I, I agree with the commissioners here that it's considered expression of some sort, whether it's political, commercial, social, anything. Uh, all of a sudden, the neighborhood starts complaining. Now, who's going to listen to this complaint and act on it? Is there a need to have whatever commission, whether it's the art or this or right. somebody well, else, that uh, can handle it? Are we going into a bigger uh, problem here? Well, I think um, this is just the first step um, because th this will go to the Cultural and Arts Commission. And I have, in my research, most no towns actually have the zoning commission oversee these arts and this public art. Thank you. But there will be a, a commission to oversee it and approve it. So, I mean, theoretically, I guess legally, right now somebody could do it because it's freedom of speech. But if we want to regulate it, then we're going to have culture and arts commission review it. At least that, that's the last discussion that I had. So we're just moving forward. And, and if you're not, if you would like more information and more details, I'm glad to do that for you moving forward. So. Uh, no. oh. can, can, yeah. Go ahead. Will the cultural arts have regulations and specifications and are they available to the public? Do people, will people know where to go to look for this? So yeah, I think that's an they, excellent question, and I, that's exactly what I was going to speak to, okay. is that in all my years of doing this, I would strongly recommend that you not attempt to play any role in, in, in this, and, and so that's the first point. Second point is that um, the, the council would need to adopt some type of ordinance, create an ordinance to both empower this committee as well as to have those standards and criteria, the application requirements, you know, and, and that whole thing. But that would be done at the council through the town code as opposed to you here. And I, I think Lori is right. I think we regulate commercial signage um, and to the extent something today, if something were done today, irrespective of a regulation amendment, you, you still wouldn't be empowered to regulate it. Nor, nor would you really necessarily want to. I don't uh, really want to. <laughs> right, yeah. So um, I think what Lori's trying to do is kind of a belt and suspenders type of approach, where by this language it makes it explicitly clear to everyone that you are not the regulatory authority for art, yes. public, for public art, and it's done in some other venue based on the council's, you know, decision as a whole, so. Um, Thank you. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Mr. Molinsky? Yeah, what, what bothers me is the distinct statement that says, that says it's uh, listed as an exempt use in our sign uh, regulations. I would prefer, I, I don't have a problem with putting the exempt in, but there's nothing behind that that basically s explains Who's regulating it? So I think if we would put in something, you know, a statement saying covered by, you know, Cultural Arts Commission or whoever it is, and or town council, or something like that, that would be a guide. Because people are going to look at that and say, oh, we don't have to go yeah. to P and Z, and, and and we don't, you know, doesn't look like we have to go anywhere. <laughs> so I'm cons it, it seems kind of wide open, just saying it's exempt. Maybe but something but I don't think there's I don't think there's any need. I I understand and appreciate exactly what you're saying, yeah. but if if you kind of broaden out the scope of the discussion to other topical areas, there's really no need to identify in the zoning regulations everything that is done by by somebody else that's not done in the zoning regulations. So I, I absolutely appreciate what you're saying. Some people might interpret it that way, but. Um, something like the noise ordinance. Yeah. We don't regulate the noise ordinance. It's under the police department. Demolition permits are done by the building department. But we don't, in the zoning regulation, necessarily say X, X, Y, Z. So 
I think we can continue to kind of discuss that, and if there's some way okay. to kind of finesse it in the language of what yeah. we're doing here, but um, okay. I'd be a little bit concerned with putting something in a, in a zoning regulation that says that you got to go over here to do this when well, we don't control. Thought, you know, that was just a thought. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand. I understand. I appreciate what you're saying, and 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 it is. It's a it's a difficult topic. It's very dense, and it's it's potentially very controversial. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we're trying to do here is to just make sure that it's clear that this is not zoning. This is not something that we want to get into. Now, 824s, as you saw with the monument down the road here, that's a different thing. That's an 824. That's perfectly within your purview. So so use of public lands or public buildings, you wanted to do a mural on the side of town hall, you would have some yeah. input into right. that, probably through the 824 thing. Right. Um, but it wouldn't be necessarily a, a permit, you know, okay. per se. Right. So. So obviously um, the discussion has been had that, you know, we don't want graffiti and we want art as, you know, without um, phallic symbols and whatever, yeah. the, you know, uh, uncalled for messages or something like that. So that's where the oversight would come from. Yeah. And I believe there would probably be a permit process and even, you know, just a, a, an entire process for that and I'm again. I'm assuming it's going to be the Cultural and Arts Commission. It theoretically, could be Town Council, but I think that it will be the Cultural and Arts Commission, and so they will have their steps to go through to approve anything. So, and I imagine that we'll probably be involved with helping to create that. Either way, that'll be done through a council ordinance. Yes. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Regardless right. where they decide to put it, yeah, it'll be done on their end. Commissioner, Commissioner Petro, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple other comments uh, with with respect to uh, say maintenance. Now, if, if if it's art or a mural and it's the side of a building, uh, first of all, I get a problem. You take a nice masonry wall and cover it with paint, paint a mural. I'd rather look at the brickwork. It's just my trade. So anyway, uh, to me, that's art. But uh, uh, looking at the brickwork. But anyway. Uh, you, we see a lot of these older buildings from, from, from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, um, and I think we still got one down here. You see the old Faber's sign on, on the side of that building down there, the old Gray's Club building, I think it is. Uh, anyway, uh, they, they get uh, all worn out and faded and so forth. Um, how, how would you be able to police or who's responsible for maintaining that, cleaning it up or redoing it or uh, restoring it? Or, you know, would, would there be some sort of... Uh, 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 protection to uh, uh, to restore it, or to, so that it doesn't get like that. It, that those are issues that would have to be addressed in in the town council ordinance. They'd have to establish some type of requirements. It, I don't. We're just thinking out loud, do, do people have to post some kind of a cash surety for maintenance that's kept? And if you don't do it, then we take your money and we do it for you. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. But it wouldn't wouldn't be this board it would be some other board assigned by the council based on an ordinance that they would adopt that would hopefully address all all of those issues yeah uh, you know the whole thing the whole uh, you know society has changed a little bit and what we live in now and in and, and again what what you see again it, it's it's subjective um statues um of uh, founding fathers are being ripped out for people with attitudes and they're throwing the statues in a river. Um, again, that's the point I'm trying to make. It's subjective to one person. It's, it's, uh, it's art to another person. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's graffiti. It's, it's, it's blight or whatever. They're, they're offended by it. And if you do something and, and, it, and it does offend people, there's no recourse, I guess. It's just, you know, people are going to have to just look at that for forever technically depending on you know a, a mural could be very uh, long term so it's just absolutely and it's a completely valid concern yeah. um so i when i did some of this research and i actually went out on the listserv you know norwich old lime bridgeport um new um west hartford uh, i think salem was one but there was a number of towns that have examples of how to regulate these the, mm -hmm. the public art items. So I'm sure that that's what, you know, we'll, we'll follow, we'll find one that works for Enfield and obviously it'll have to get approved through town council. But again, the point is, is that it's not your jurisdiction. Right. So. Are you all set, John? 
Commissioner D'Antonio? Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate this. I think that the explicit clarity in the regulations is, is, is certainly a good thing, and it's a good thing to not be in this commission. As far as uh, the proposed uh, updates to the um, regulations, just some comments or question um, if, if staff wants to respond. Um, I, I'm wondering, it, it almost feels like uh, the exemption is kind of buried if we are going to add it to, to Group G. I mean, can we put it in the purpose of the regulations right at the beginning? Right, the purpose is to regulate signs, and you know, in that section where it excludes uh, excludes public art. It's, it's, located, it's located under general requirements, mm -hmm. and so it's the very first section of our sign mm -hmm. regulation. So if anybody reads that, yeah. they're going to know that if they read go any further, they're not going to be able to do it through here. Yeah, I guess, yeah, so. I guess I, I guess I, I just see it more as like. Um, like, like the purpose of this section is to regulate signs, and we differentiate signs from public art. I, I don't, I don't think it's a huge deal. It's just a, just a thought. Um, and then the definition, of course, I, I expect to see in the definitions in the in the beginning, right? Um, and and just a thought um, is more of uh, just musing out loud. I don't know if it's worth updating the the definition of signs to explicitly exclude public art, um, or if you think that uh, this may be sufficient. Um, and, and that I, I, I'm not saying there's a clear answer to. I think, I think this works, but just again for extra, you know, uh, clarity. I don't know if that's uh, worth adding. Good point. Mm -hmm. Any other commissioner degree? Um, I have to agree with uh, Commissioner Petronella. I too would rather see brick than a painted on a beautiful brick building, especially some of the older buildings that are down here. Some of the um, construction already on them are, is beautiful. And I know this is art and everybody has an opinion about art. Always. I do worry that, um, that we're putting in, that we wouldn't be putting, the Arts Commission would be doing this, that it gives people a license to decide, oh, I'm going to paint this on the side of my house and, you know, it's my art and it's my expression. And who are we, the public, to say, eh, that's kind of inappropriate. So I find murals kind of not always the best thing to do to a building. That, that's my concern is, oh, I have this big wall in my house. I'm going to paint and because I don't like my neighbor next door. So I'm going to paint this big, and it could be to that person, beautiful. But we already have an incident going on on Elm Street with expression. So, so excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of the things that I did notice is that some towns have actually created a cultural and arts um, zone. So that might be something that could be considered to at least limit it to certain areas of town or so. And again, this is not going to be a zoning issue to discuss, but I can certainly relay this to uh, leadership. Just <clears throat> my curiosity is basically right now, since we don't <clears throat> have anything related to this in our regulations at all. I mean, could someone just put a mural up now in, in do, yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, why, why yes. not? Theoretically, I mean, yes. Why, why Theoretically, how, yes. Who, who would decide that they could or couldn't do that? I mean, if it, if it were, you know, I, I, I haven't read the town code, so I, but I assume we have some kind of a provision in there about pornography yeah. Yeah. And, and other like extremely offensive yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. So maybe that that's something, but that would be um, that would be a, a, a an action by probably the police, I, I would assume, or something. So, but if someone <clears throat> puts a mermaid on the side of some building, yeah. mermaid, and yeah. it's on the side. Of, so I, so now, what I think, I guess, where I'm headed with this is that. Yep. There's some significant concerns, all perfectly legitimate and valid. So 
when or if the council decides to kind of go forward with this initiative, either individually or collectively as a board, you, you should decide how you want or if you want to like input to that process. And if you think that as a commission, that that's something that you want to speak to, then do it that way. If, if individuals, or you could do both ways, individuals and, com and the commissions, but the, the time and place to really raise all these concerns is when that ordinance is being brought up at the council and make sure that they understand, the members understand. I like the idea of, personally, I like the idea of limiting it, and they have used entertainment districts to a degree where it seems to be appropriate. I think you can limit, um, you know, don't allow it in residential zones for all properties. I think there, I assume there's some kind of scope limitations you can you can put on it, or the council could put on it that would maybe deal with some of, yep. some of these things. And my great grandfather was a stone cutter, <laughs> so I like granite. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of granite, so. I, I appreciate your comments about, about the brick. <laughs> so here, here we are, here, if I may, here we are. I mean, basically what's happening around us is that there's other discussions going on about mural art on buildings. Uh, town manager, town council, a couple of developers, um, they're talking about the cultural arts. It might not be the cultural arts, but ultimately the council is kind of going to decide where we're going to go down the road with this or not, not the planning and zoning. Yeah. And what our staff is trying to do, and I think the town manager also has some input into this, is do we want to be in this business or do we want to get out of this business? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like really what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And the other elected body will take responsibility mm -hmm. for what happens with this particular issue and not us. Now, it could very well be the majority of you say, well, no, I don't want that with the elected body. I want to be the policeman on this. That's really kind of like what we kind of have to decide. I kind of hope we can kind of get a consensus tonight on which way to give staff, not just this staff, but other staff too, who's watching this, you know, direction on how to handle this issue. Um, so myself personally, I would like to see us go forward, at least what we have here, so that we're out of the mural and art business and, and let the town manager and the town council decide where it is. Yeah. Yeah, um, Jenny wanted to get some. I'm sorry. Yep, go ahead. No, go ahead, I was just going to suggest that uh, you pass along the uh, our body's concerns to the town council. John and Linda had some valid concerns that I hadn't thought of, and maybe they might want to think about it as well, since they'll be kind of leading the charge, and we won't be. We'll be out of it. With what you just suggested, um, we could theoretically move this forward and then have a public hearing on it because that's the only way we put it in yeah, the regulations. Absolutely. So if, you, if you're okay with that to move forward to send to Krug, and then you could still deny it. Yeah. Yeah. We're either going to be in this business yeah. or out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Out. yeah. Out. Uh, Go ahead. If, if, you know, we're our... Uh, part part of our job is I mean what, what we're here to do is 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 kind of uh, um, we're approving plans and applications based upon the regulations and and, and things that are aesthetically uh, 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 you know appealing uh, to the site and so forth and and sometimes you look at it like we approve a building. The, the applicant goes through a painstaking effort. They come in here with samples. This is the brick we're going to put up. This is the siding we're going to use. This, these are the colors and so forth, and we approve it. Well, they get it up, and uh, three months later, they're painting it different, or there's a mural on it, or, or whatever it may be. So nobody has control over that. I'm not going to say we don't. But it, 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 it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, we go through all of that, and they do that. To me, it's no different than, okay, we approve a plan, that's got landscaping on it, that meets landscaping requirements. Why can't those people, right after they put the landscaping up a, a year later, just go out there and rip out the landscaping because they want to do something different? Uh, you know, we're, we, we're a body here that needs to, uh, I mean, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, I know we're, we're not going to get into the business of policing that, but if the council and the Cultural Arts C Commission, I, I, I think that they should at least hear our, our concerns out. I think, we, you know, we have some valid concerns and hopefully they take some of that into consideration. Um, and and it, I, I think it's, it's part of our job not to be in a mural business, but to, to make areas aesthetically uh, uh, appealing and, and appeasing to, to, the, to the neighborhoods. So that being said, I think I'm, I'm done. Good points, John. Mr. Chairman, I just want to clarify one thing, though. And 
Commissioner Petronella raises a, 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 a good a good question, a couple of good questions. The Planning and Zoning Commissions in Connecticut don't have the, the legal jurisdiction or authority to regulate colors, the type of siding on a building, and some of the things that you did mention. While we know, as a practical matter, a lot of us do. And people come in, and I think in order to you know, try to get their application approved, they'll make certain representations. But the fact of the matter is, is that we really don't have that. Landscaping, you do have the right to regulate landscaping. So if, to the example of someone rips it out a year later, that's a zoning violation. That's a violation of the site plan. And we deal with that, and I've dealt with it for many, many, many years, where someone decides they need more exposure with their front of their building to the street, so they want to rip out the street trees that were required on the site plan 15 years ago, but they think the trees are too big now, so I'm going to rip them out. And that becomes a zoning violation. But if someone wants to change their siding, from you know cedar shakes to, to clabbered if the plan was approved with cedar shakes i'm not sure that that gives you the authority to go in and say no 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 you can't do clapboard you got to do the cedar shakes so just want to be careful about parsing out what you have rights to do if, if it's a historic district if it's a village district the statutes provide you with authority to do certain things in terms of aesthetics as far as architecture and those those kinds of things lighting you have obviously the, the right to, to regulate lighting, including lighting that is attached to a building that is used for co basically commercial purposes, commercial you know, speech in a sense. You see a lot of that with um, in, in more kind of urban kind of entertainment kind of areas. So uh, I think it's important to just kind of keep things straight, zoning versus other things, so. Um, um certainly aware aware of that matt and, and what our jurisdiction is and so forth i try to make an analogy but uh you know again um it is subjective to um you know art you're saying is subjective if if, if one person thinks it's art in the rest of the in the, in the rest of the town doesn't think so they can do whatever they want to the building um uh, and so forth i i just you know have have, have a tough time swallowing that uh, because no you know, I absolutely agree it, it, I absolutely it, agree I've, I've avoided this you know all throughout my career for those for those yeah. very reasons yeah. because it is it's an impossible yeah. task to, yeah. to, to regulate yeah. Yeah. and um, the First Amendment in the Constitution is a very powerful thing mm -hmm. and if people are motivated enough and they have deep pockets and good lawyers uh, they'll they'll pursue it. There's been cases in Stonington Borough, you're probably familiar with that, where neighbors have who hate each other, one decides that he's going to paint his house completely black um, just to make his neighbor angry. And we, there was an allusion to what's going on now with a certain, you know, sign, if you want to call it, and those kind of things. So it's, it's, it is a very difficult thing. We're trying to keep you guys out of it to, to make sure you don't get embroiled in having to deal with things. You've got a lot of other important things to, to do. You already said, John? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure just something that Commissioner Petronell just brought up. We have a, zo um, a zoning officer, and who would be the person? Would it be our zoning person that would have no. to go out and say, hey, this is falling no. down no. and fix it? I mean, who would police that? I counsel. So the zoning officer may only enforce zoning regulations. Right, but who's going to police? So we do this? have a blight officer if oh, no. it f fell under blight, and otherwise, um, I'm I'm not positive if that's if that's, there's some sort of jurisdiction regulatory official. Yeah. <laughs> from the. The, the, art, the art police. You yeah. Know, they, uh, yeah. You know, I, who's going to be very nice uniforms? <laughs> as I mentioned, as I mentioned before, colorful. As I colorful <laughs> uniforms. Please, everyone. As I mentioned before, I, either we're in this, going to stay in this business, no. or we're going to we're going to leave. If we leave this business, then the that. town council, hopefully with some input from us and from staff, will decide who's going to be responsible for that, yeah. and who's in charge of policing that. Not not the zoning board. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the intent here is that um, for us not to really be embroiled in this particular issue. 
Yeah. Um, so I would highly recommend at this point that we recommend to staff that we set a public hearing for this and move on with this yep. and let the elected body handle it since they seem to want to handle it. Yep. That's, that's why it's here in the first place. We, it was, wasn't staff who said put this on our agenda, okay? <laughs> All right. Is there a consensus at least to do that? Yep. yep. I think there's a general consensus to move forward with this uh, in the same manner as the cannabis uh, regulation. Yep. Thank you, everyone. And I'm sure a lot of people who are going to be making decisions are listening to us tonight. So I'm sure we'll hear back from them yep. in some form or another. Okay. All right. Correspondence. Is there any correspondence? Nope. Commissioner's correspondence. I had a couple of things, if I can. One is I want to remind everyone, please, that next Wednesday night we have our POCD review. It's really important that you attend. I, I know things do come up and some of you might not be able to, but please make an effort to attend. It's a quasi workshop with the POCD committee. Um, it's our meeting, so we're going to determine the scope and how that goes off. Uh, but we do want to hear some of the input. We do need to start going through that document. Um, Is it here? It's in a skiddy room. Go ahead, Lori. I believe I might have found some money for food. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we might hopefully going to feed you as well. Okay. Not um, the downtown fancy restaurant we're going to have. No. Yeah, th um, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the other thing is, is that we are going to have a virtual link. Okay. So if you can't make it and you can still be there and attend virtually, you should, you'll be able to do that. Okay, thank you. And we need, to, we need to be moving on to POCD. We really do. We have timetables, and yep. but we really can't be stagnant on this at this point. We have to move. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank staff and the legal, our legal department, too, for the training session we had last week. Thank you very much for those of you who were able to attend. If those of you who couldn't attend, it, it really was nice. It was nice that all three boards, a majority of, of the members of all three boards also met with staff and legal staff. That was really even the neater thing about it. Um, I think it was uh, very well done, and hopefully we'll have some more of those going forward. And I know as chairman, I, I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that one of the commissioners mentioned to me, Titus, wanted to mention, since, since I'll take advantage of the fact that we are on TV, is the fact that please I need to emphasize to the public that when we especially when we have an application that's submitted to us or one that still is an open hearing please do not approach a planning zoning member and start asking them questions about the application that is illegal we are not allowed to be conversing with the public when something is open it's not that commissioners are being rude this but we are not we are bound not to have those conversations or reply back to your emails or even pick up the phone um, that's just the way it is i know it comes across as we're rude or not caring or snotty whatever you want to be. that is not the case at all we would leave ourselves open um to legal action. So I just want to emphasize that. Please don't do that to the commissioners. Not probably not in this board, probably in all the land use boards, probably the same thing. So uh, please, please don't do that. And I'm, I'm really asking you, please. The other thing, I just to staff, just as a reminder, I probably could have done this in email and I hate to do this because usually I don't, you know, throw bombs. But just a reminder, could you please try to contact the young lady who is the Krog's representative to us about the mall study? because we had some open-ended questions still with her, especially about the uh, Elm Street problems with Elm Street as far as the timing, the crosswalks, handicapped access. She brought up very good points about, you know, how many accidents were there, people getting hit. Um, and she implied that she'd be able to give us some direction about starting the process of trying to get the state to answer some of those problems. So if you can get back to her to see if she can, in the near future, do a meeting with us and update on that, I'd be really appreciative. I know we had a, a loss in that department, too, so I know she's probably got a lot in it. But if you can just make some I, I have the same request from leadership, so okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I do see? either way. Now, that, was, that was not a tag team, by the way. I, I didn't realize you had that. I'm all done. Any other? Commissioner Holinsky? Yes. Um, we had a question. Uh, I think it was last meeting. It may have been the meeting before about what happened to the, uh, the sign at uh, JFK, the original sign. And I happened to drive by there last week, and you know this is when we were reviewing this the new sign uh, requirements. And uh, I happened to drive by there last week. It looks like looks to me like the sign is still there. It's still no, there. no, the there. concrete piers are already built, and they'll be installing a new sign within the concrete pier there. Okay, did they new. take the old sign down in the meantime? Yeah. Then yeah. Oh, it's okay. all gone. So it was still there. <laughs> uh, at now that the time. landscaping, etc., it's almost all set. Okay. Great. Yeah. We didn't find the 13,000. <clears> oh, <throat> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. 
Commissioner Halinski, are, are you looking to find out where the old sign actually went? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I just happened to, I, I I just happened to buy, drive by there, I, I okay. think a couple of days after the meeting, and I saw the sign, and I said, ah, oh, it's still there. You know? Yeah. I guess in the meantime, now they've been working there, and it's, it's gone somewhere. Okay, thank you. Nothing else. Seeing that, Director of Planning Report. Well, you took some of my thunder away. I was going to talk about the uh, land use training workshop, which I thought was kind of fun, actually. Uh, you know, people were a little jovial and kind of got, you know, silly at times, which is kind of nice, you know, because it's it's really dry subject matter. <laughs> so, and it was good. It just seemed like everybody was getting along, and that's, that's awesome. Um, we hope to be doing more of those, and I hope that everybody from all the land use commissions, especially planning and zoning, ZBA, and wetlands can get to them. Um, uh, the, I have for you the POCD steer, um, timetable. Did I? Ha I didn't hand that out. Actually, yeah. yeah, you need the steps today. <laughs> so, going through the public act. Thank you. Twenty-one. I'm sorry. 1595 and figuring out what has to be done at what time because it like goes back and forth throughout the whole public act so I tried to schedule things based on an assumed public hearing of December 15th because everything is based on December on the public hearing date and then you have to back up 65 days and then there's things that have to be done within all of the time frame so within 65 what, what happens 65 days prior to the public hearing is that we have to submit the draft to Krog and to town council now during the time that they have this ability to during the 65 days they all have ability to actually still modify the plan as does the planning and zoning commission so um, in speaking with Don Poland our consultant he was saying you know well let, let's have the start date of, 11, of October 11th and then we submit the draft to Prague and Town Council on the 11th and then theoretically we can have an, a presentation of the draft POCD at our October 13th meeting with the consultant. Um, then 35 days before we have to submit the draft to town clerk and post on the website. We could do it before then but that's the statutory requirement. Um, then we, ha of course, have to do our legal notice for the public hearing. So d during all of this, let's say the town council has, a, they may hold a hearing or two or however many they want. If they disagree with some of the items, then the PZC has the right to override it or approve only portions of the plan of conservation and development at the time of the public hearing. And then there's adoption dates by um, 30 days after the public hearing. Um, the approved plans or the sections thereof must be posted on the town's website and in the town clerk's office. And then 60 days following that public hearing. <laughs> this was a lot of fun to, to figure out, by the way. Um, so 60 days after adoption, the POCD has to be submitted to the Secretary of Office of Policy and Management, which is OPM. So there's a lot of notes that are con connected to these dates, and they're all literally the section of the public act that pertains to that date, but they're in sequence of order as opposed to the actual act, which is all over the place. So, so if, I, if I may, you, you mentioned something I just wanted to emphasize back. We have the review with the with the committee. We make some changes that during that <clears throat> review, whatever have you. Mm -hmm. We submit it to Krog and the town council, and the town council then wants to make changes. So right. what, what happens have there? Yeah, that you go 65 through sixty-five days to review it so and you, do a public hearing or propose changes. Without without as, to, right. as does Krog. Without without our without our they can, they can right. Right, they, they have the right yes. to make changes to the POCD without are blessing. They, they, they have the right to propose changes to the POCD. And Pose. then there's a, there, I, I need to get a little bit more legal okay. background on, on what the word proposed, yeah. would transpire if, right. if they were adamant about one thing and right. how, how you could override them or not. Now, will we actually have a working session with the council or do we just present it? 
Um, that is, we probably should have a working session with them. Um, because I, I, in, you know, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here, and I, I'm looking at, at Commissioner Holinsky too, who sat there also, and, and unfortunately Commissioner Lefakis is not here tonight, who actually sat there. I would hate to just load this on them and have them read it, and then without us being able to answer any mm -hmm. questions or work with them, because there might be some consensus that some counselors might bring up some changes they want to make, mm -hmm. and as a majority of us might say, you know, oh my gosh, we, we didn't think of it that way. That's a good point. We should make those changes. Instead of them just getting it on the blind and just, you know what so I'm saying? Ken, since you, know, you and I both sat there, we know the process and how they think. Um, I mean, I, I hate, I don't really want to handle it that way. I guess as your chairman, I don't really want to handle it that way. I'll do whatever right. you guys want. Don't get me wrong, but I'm I, just I, thinking aloud. I tend to agree that we should have a workshop with them. Um, we'll have to figure out timing of that. And yeah. So I, I didn't, yeah, we, have okay. to, we have to give them the document by a certain yeah. date. Yep. They have 65 days to review it and, and act on it. So we'll have to work on perhaps maybe having a workshop like we're having with yep. the steering committee. Um, with the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Town Council. Yeah. I would highly recommend. I think that I'm looking for Ken too just to acknowledge. I, yeah, I, like, I like that idea. I, I think it's good to work together face to face. It'll get done quicker and, <laughs> and things won't be missed. Hopefully. Yeah, I like that. It might save some agita too. It might create some yeah, too. But <laughs> Well, that's true. But you, are, you always have that risk. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so yeah, yeah if you so could I, talk I, with I, Ellen. Yeah, I'll about, talk with Ellen yeah. about that because yeah. I told her that we'd be giving them the, the uh, document in October so so again you can see how important next next Wednesday night is yep because we really have to get a lot accomplished next Wednesday night um, yes, and, uh, and if, the, I'm sorry go and ahead. if I can and, and please if I'm if if I'm wrong here you can please feel free to correct me yes if we had the steering commission which is very few members left right Karan <laughs> right yeah um, but it's I have to remember they, they did a lot of work they're going to present this and Don too and staff they but it's our document okay it is our document it's not really their document yeah. even though they were nice enough to, to do this with us and I'm <clears throat> thankful and, but it's really the end of the day it's our document that's getting passed off to the council so we kind of have to be cognizant that next Wednesday I think we'll go a long way if we keep that mm -hmm. thought in our head yeah. uh, right and and in speaking with Don I think that we really would like everybody to focus on things that obviously if there's something in the plan that you just hate or you know really dislike and want out you know we could discuss that but I think there's a lot of statutory requirements in the plan so we, as long as we're not taking anything that's statutorily out we, we should be fine but we're really looking for things that we may have missed that we really should have in the plan so think along those lines as well so it's like, you know, it's like, wait a second, I thought we, we had a goal for, you know, conserving, you know, 20% uh, open space or, or whatever it might be. And, you know, and so we want to make sure that those things are in there that we thought should be in there. And going, you could go back and reference the previous plan as well. And, and quite honestly, most of the stuff in the previous plan, you know, a lot of it is relevant, but it's it's sort of kind of like low-hanging fruit, kind of just understood type stuff. It's dated. It's dated now. Yeah, it's 12 it's years dated. ago. Yeah, it's Yeah. So. And you, and you will be next, uh, before we start, or at least as we're proceeding next Wednesday, you and staff will point out the statutory things, because I, I, I know some of that's going to come up, and a lot of people are unclear of some of the statutory, so you will mention those yep. that really you might be able to change a word or two, but they have to stay in the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And that's something I think the council is going to have to understand also, to be quite frank with you. Right, like the housing items and yes. The yes. sewer service area, things like that. Yep. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, applications to receive. Did you want this briefly or? Um, sure, just real quick. Uh, PH 3043 is um, withdrawn. They're going to try to go to ZBA. Uh, SBR 1902, 90 Alden Avenue is an application request from Bell Site Development to replace an existing vacant gym right there yep. on 90 Alden Avenue with 20 unit apartment building. 
So that's the gym that everybody's been talking about. Um, SBR 1899, 18 Mullen Road, they actually withdrew that application because they resubmitted a new application, PH 3047, which basically is a little bit more accurate and more to the point of what they're trying to do. And um, we're just receiving tonight the Marijuana Regulations XCA 3048, which you want us to send on to Krug. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And we'll create a, a, an application for the um, public art, so that could be received at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Any opportunities or unresolved issues? Yeah, I'm just, I, I did have one, one app, uh, administrative question for you very quickly because I honestly don't know. I mean, I'll admit when I don't know something. The deadline isn't passed for receiving applications for our next meeting, is it? I always lose track of that. I mean, like you so, could still receive something Monday or Tuesday, right? For like right. So the applications, when they come in, they are received at the next meet, the next regular meeting, whenever it is, whether it's tomorrow or in three weeks, okay. or within thirty-five days, which happened, whichever comes first. Okay. It's thirty-five, right? No, thirty-five. Yeah, okay. thirty-five okay. days. Thank you. Just a quick uh, question, because I know, having been here for a while on the planning and zoning. We did have a schedule that kind of showed you when you receive um, an application, the steps. I don't know if you still have that um, schematic. Just, it, it Doesn't just ring said, a bell. you know, if it, you get it um, today, you have X number of days to so review it and then it's just the steps, and it, it was just a nice little rubric that showed so the timeline. What we what we haven't been doing, and I was just noticing this today, is we really need to put with these applications the date of receipt, the mandatory action date, and things like that. Yeah. We could do that on the agenda, which that might would, be, be great. That would probably be very helpful yeah. for some of the newer commissioners. I think that just kind of it just got lost in the shuffle, and I was okay. noticing I was like, yeah, we don't have to do that, and we should. Yeah, if you can, that'd so, be great. Right, and right. it's also helpful for staff to make sure that we're sure. in the proper timelines. Very sure. Yep. All right, thank you. Any, anything else? Any opportunities or unresolved issues? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion made by Second. Vice Chairman uh, DeGray, seconded by Vice Chairman Haley to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Let the record show that the Enfield Planning Zoning meeting has ended at 8.09. <laughs>